Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Badass Outdoors. This episode, I'm heading on up to the peninsula, my homeland. I'm super excited to get out and just like spend some time out in a river, relaxing, just me and my dog and some really cool friends. Let's get on up to the peninsula. You're going too. Oh boy, it's a little thicker than it was before. That's how it be sometimes. Chef, I apologize for taking you down a gravel road in the summertime. It is a little overgrown, but you are a trooper following us through this. <laughs> Let's go, Oli. Come on out. All right, chef, this is the Mighty Queets. Nice. Well, I've not been to the Queets before. I've been to many rivers on the Olympic Peninsula, the Ho. What I'm seeing so far is it's really wide and really calm. Yeah, this is my favorite part of this section of the river because of that calmness. Yeah. We're so far from an easy access point as you kind of maybe notice rolling in. Yeah, for sure. Um, but this is a, a glacial to ocean river. So we are just a few miles up from the Pacific Ocean. And this is the time of the year where these coho are like that biological clock's ticking and they're like, let's go spawn and make some more. Uh -huh. And so let's try to intercept them on the way up. Yeah, I'm hoping so. We're fishing in one of my favorite ways today. We're doing spinner fishing, and it's okay. great because it covers many different species. It's a pretty easy cast and retrieve. I can okay. hear fish jumping, which is getting me like super excited. <laughs> getting me excited. Too. I know. So we're in target coho. We could come across summer steelhead. Okay. We could come across trout. All of these things are delicious and mm -hmm. awesome. So I'm happy with any of those. Me too. So let's get you rigged up. Nice. We have this temperate weather. We have all of this rain that makes everything so great here. Um, but the, the key really is that nutrient deposit after they spawn and die and float to the side of the river and they deposit all of that greatness from the ocean back into the river banks. This is part of what makes our trees, our forests so incredible here. There's truly nothing like the Olympic Peninsula and I'm, I am stoked that you're going to get to see it from this vantage point. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when I look at rivers, I usually am looking for a dipping hole. Yeah. I like jumping in the, the river and getting a nice little hole plunge. But it's Absolutely. been really fun to fish with some other uh, experts and to see how they see the river. Yeah. Uh, which is a whole new way of looking at it. Awesome. As far as lures and bait, what are we looking at today? So we're pitching hardware today. All of these fish strike really well on these spinners. Okay. And these all have like a weighted body and a blade. And so they spin around, very attractive to the fish. And then we have these big river hooks, which is really the right thing for the size of fish we have out here. Okay. This is nice for us to see. I don't want the fish to see that mm -hmm. so much. And so I have this fluorocarbon leader that I add to it, just to make you a bit more stealthy. This is my favorite one. It's called the Crazy Alberto, which funny story, someone online had asked me to do a video on my favorite knot. So I did, and I posted it at Crazy Alberto. And someone tagged an Instagram account called Crazy Alberto, and it was a real living, like, wow. current. It is. And I had to give the guy some props for a great knot. And now we're set. Pinch the line to the rod. Okay. Good, that's good to place it like that. Okay, you're gonna flip it. the veil. And then when you're ready, you're gonna send it out and release at the same time. Look where you're gonna go. Oh, buddy. Not bad. That's what's up. That is what's up. So you're gonna wanna be faster on the bail click and the retrieve, because boy, that baby's sinking fast. Okay, good, good to know. That was excellent though. There is something to just about standing in a river too. Truly, right? truly. And as far as your show, Hook, Line, and History, yeah. so you're obviously fishing, but then what else are you uh, doing in the show? I'm a historian um, of Pacific Northwest fisheries history and indigenous history. Fantastic. And to me, everything that I do with fishing is so deeply linked to decisions that people made who came before me. And why do we have this fishery? Why is it the way that it is? And I think like getting people to connect with the land and, and answering that question, what is it about this land that raised you? What is, what is the deal with that? How, does that? how is it formative to who I am, who you are? Why you ended up doing the things that you do based off of 
this place that raised you, you know, Port Angeles and sure. these other places you've talked about. We all have that. We all have that somewhere. And this is it for me. And I really want to encourage people to think about what it is for them, where it is for them. And to go and experience it in a new way. Oli, hey. Fish on. Fish on. I don't need help. I don't need help, Oli. Like what you think, my friend. I do have a question for you. Do you have any recipes for trout? <laughs> now this is awesome. Hello. It's dinner time, isn't it? All right, chef. I have some delicious cleaned fillets for you. Beautiful. What we're doing here tonight is something that's really easy to uh, prepare and probably some ingredients that you already have in your refrigerator right now. So we're gonna do pan seared trout with uh, a sauce that I made here and made that before. Amazing. So, so it's all ready and smell that. I cannot wait to have that. So here. this has some cilantro, this has honey, Dijon, lemon juice and some salt. So pretty easy and I love preparing this before so when it does come time to cook the fish, just throw it right in the pan. Love it. Yes, that looks absolutely beautiful. Do that. I like that smell, the smell. I'm, I'm enjoying that. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna get right in with my camera because sure. I feel like this is a part of the cooking process too, yep. is bragging. Get it with the last bit of lemon. So while I was waiting for you, I actually was able to forage for some wild blackberries Excellent. as well. So these are kind of the bigger guys. Okay. But still great Northwest treat. Great color there, great Beautiful. texture. Anytime I catch a trout, this is the first thing that's gonna come to mind. Oh yes. Oh, the goods. oh my goodness. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. We'll get you a spork here. Beautiful. Well, cheers. Cheers. If you guys can't have this full catch and cook experience, check out Wild for Salmon. They have some fantastic stuff. Fresh, caught, frozen, shipped right to your door. They have black cod. Amazing. They have awesome canned salmon that's just way better than the normal grocery store. We started working with Wild for Salmon, and yeah. I like that a lot. They send salmon, it comes right to my door. The last one that I got, it had like dry ice in it, packaged, like I got home from school, like cracked it open. That's what I'm excited with that, is like something that's already flayed out, everything's perfectly proportioned, I just cut it up how I like it, smoked salmon, here we go. Thank you so much for sharing your river here with me. Absolutely. What I always want from a great experience is honoring the fish. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're doing that right now. Well, I definitely agree. I know you've been looking at that skin. I know you want some of that skin, and I'm a good mom. Mm-hmm. There you go. And that is it. We've wrapped up. Thank you so much for watching. We're on to the next fishing adventure. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell me what you loved about this, and we'll see you next time.